SLS AMG and I'm already on track at Laguna Seca. Now the engine is a development of the normal 6.2 litre V8 from other AMGs. They call it a 6.3 but it's, but it's not. And a gearbox is new and unique to this car as well. No other Mercedes has got a twin clutch gearbox like this. It's the same unit as in the Ferrari California. The software is slightly different. It doesn't put those instant changes in like the California. There's a slight delay. And actually sometimes there's a bit of a delay as to what it does. When you ask it to change as well, you don't always get the changes you want to, which can just be a little frustrating. Now the reason they've got that box it's a transaxle, there's a carbon torque tube that only weighs about four or five kilos, I think, down the middle of the car. And because the gearbox is at the back, the weight distribution is excellent. It's about just over 50% to the front, I think, 53, 47, or something like that. The chassis and body itself are all aluminium, apart from the boot lid, which is plastic. And it's extremely rigid. And you can feel that it, it, on the road, you can feel that it's a massively stiff body shell. That's allowed AMG to set up the suspension to work really rather well actually, I've got to be honest. It rides pretty well on the road, but it's also doesn't dive too much on the track. It feels almost, it's got big wide sills at the side as well, it feels almost like you're driving a really big Lotus Elise or something. It's, something a bit of the Evora about it, only because the engine is in the front rather than out the back, it's certainly more forgiving than an Elise. It's a lot heavier as well in fairness, so it all happens a wee bit slower. The performance is, well, it's, it's absolutely as good as you'd expect, there's well over 500 horsepower of Mercedes AMG claim 0-60 to 60 in. 3.7 which feels entirely believable. There's enough weight over the back to give it decent traction. And this engine is peachy, I mean you can hear how good it is. It's very linear, it's naturally aspirated, very linear, very smooth. But it pulls right round to, well, over, over seven. There's a decent amount of torque there on the road too. This car goes on sale in June in the UK next year and it's going to be about 150 grand. Which is a strange sort of area really. The McLaren MP412 will be about the same ballpark. Aston V12 Vantage is sort of there or thereabouts. The 599 is nearer 200 grand but it, and this car sort of feels somewhere between sort of V12 Vantage and the, the 599 if you like it is it is a mix of sports car and GT car it leaves me a little bit colder than either of those but I think it's going to be one of those cars that's a bit of a grower and actually you know what the more time I spend in this car even just in these few laps the more it's the more it's grown on me again it is uh, Hard. I think it's going to be hard not to like it. It's a, it is a proper tool. It's going to join a very, very crowded marketplace next summer though.